Today, I figured, having now had a chance to play a lot of Ship Shape and a lot of Crab Leg, um, I wanted to take a look at the map modes that are now available to us for competitive play and weigh in on what I personally think we should be trying to prioritize more in tournament map lists. This is very subjective. This is my personal take on it. Um, this is not based on like a synthesis of a bunch of different competitive players' opinions or anything like that. Um, this is purely coming from me, and there are probably some parts of this where I personally will differ on, especially uh, the opinions of top players. Um, so take this more as something to start the dialogue and get you thinking about it, more than like, this is the objective truth that I'm t telling you as a teacher. This is knowledge you must know. Um, but this is what I would like to see played more often in tournament map lists. Remember that this is a splat zones list, okay? This does not say anything about what I think about the other map modes. For example, I really like Scorch Gorge on other modes. In S splat zones specifically, it is incredibly bad. Um, so it would be much, much higher on other lists. But because this is Splat Zones, this is what I'm thinking. And I'll, I'll probably go and try and make a separate video for each of the modes, because I have a feeling it's going to take too long to put them all in one video. And also, uh, well, that gives me more video ideas. Anyway, let's get started. And what I want to do is first set up what my criteria are for a good Splat Zones map. Um, there's a lot of nuance to this, and I'm going to have to bulldoze through some of it. But... Um, Firstly, I want this to be a map that does not have really nasty lockouts. Um, that by itself is really bad. Uh, if you don't have... Specifically what that means is you need a spawn area that is reasonably wide so that you can come out from multiple different locations when you're trying to retake. You need to have not too much distance between the spawn area and the zone. If it just takes you forever to get there and the enemy team will always be able to, f to defend like twice before you get there, then that is way too snowball-y. Uh, there should be a good variety of different play styles that can work there. Um, nothing should be over-centralizing and the zone should be a reasonable shape and size. Um, there are, there are a couple of maps that have the big zone problem, which is where it, it takes so long to paint up the zone because it's so big that it's really difficult to shift momentum in a game. There are also some maps that have too small of a zone, where a single special is all you need to cap the whole thing, um, or even less than a single special. We'll talk about a couple of those, but... Um, those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking about when I look at these maps, and also I'm just going off the way that it feels to play as a competitive player, uh, and there's about to be a cat in my lap, which I'm very okay with. Cool. So, let's get started with, these are the maps that I'd be fine with being played on zones in every tournament. Like, I don't mind just playing this all the time, let's just make this a regular part of the rotation. Mako Mart uh, Splat Zones is one of the more popular competitive map modes f out of, you know, all time since Splatoon 2. Um, it's not, like, a perfect map or anything like that. Um, it's definitely a little bit narrow in some places, but you have options that really help with the short-range kind of ambush weapons. Um, they can get in really well through the flanks. You've got enough places that are reasonable for backline weapons to take that they're not completely pushed out of the game, although they're a little bit less favored here. And then it's a good uh, shape for the zone, size for the zone. It lets you approach it from multiple different angles, um, and it's, it's reasonably close to your spawn so that you can get there. Um, but it also, you know, you are going to have to play the game to get there. You're going to have to push your way through, usually the left side, um, get control of those stacks, and then once you have control of them, then you can take it, and then you can try to lock out. And there are some flank routes that get into the base. There are some good offensive options to kind of catch people off guard, um, but it's also not an overwhelming spawn lock because of just how wide the spawn area is and the different number of places you can come out and have high ground as you're trying to retake. So I like that map a lot. Um, I, you know... 
Again, not one of my favorite map modes of all time, but it's also one that I will never mind playing. Uh, Manta Maria Zones, I think, is great. Um, it's a good mix of being wide open, um, but still having some scrappier areas that you can go to as the short-range weapons so that you can still help your team get in. Um, it's got one of the larger, like, sur areas that you have to paint in terms of the zone. You have to get control of, like, all of mid, um, which makes it a little bit less volatile. Um, and there is a lot of room between spawn and the zones, but it's very difficult to hold that. It's difficult to lock the opponents out of that. You typically only get to put someone in their street and then put someone on their left plat. And if you try to dive any deeper in when off of just like a single wipe, then they're going to catch you at low ground and they're probably going to have a pretty easy way in. Um, one really good thing that this map does is even though it's pretty long, it gives you a way out on the right-hand side that's very difficult for the defending team to contest. And that means that you're going to be able to drop people pretty close to the zone somewhere, and the defense is going to have to rotate to watch out for that. Um, so I like this map mode a lot. Um, it's, you know, not a lot of people's favorite map, but I think this one's pretty well designed. Humpback. Um, Humpback... The dome shape thing in the middle is a little bit, um, it, it kind of moves the metagame towards weapons that can like hit up over ledges, your buckets, your blasters, things like that, rollers. Um, it makes them a lot more viable. Um, and uh, this is one of the map modes where it's a little bit more difficult to get to the enemy side. Um, it's not just a, a corner you can turn like in Rainmaker. Uh, or a way to jump across on the left. It's you have to jump from the middle over to the right and then come around that corner. So it's pretty difficult to get into lockout position because it's just difficult to get people forward in time. Um, but there's a huge spawn area that lets you drop out from high ground it, from multiple different directions, lets you get your short range weapons into mid. The long range weapons have some pretty good high ground positions they can use, and they also have the ability to stay on the enemy window and lock out from there, which is an interesting offensive capability that they don't have in most maps. Um, so I think, again, pretty well balanced, pretty quick to get from uh, spawn to the zone. Um, very scrappy, tends to have a, a lot of fights and be pretty exciting, so I'm a fan of it. And then Crab Leg, um, the newest edition, obviously, and so there are a lot of uh, things that still need to be tested here, but um, I think Zones is definitely not a bad mode for it. It's very difficult to get up from mid into the enemy base, which means that it's difficult to set up a really strong lockout, which is good. It means that there's... Um, less of that kind of runaway momentum that you get from other maps. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to drop in. You have to be really carefully coordinated as a team to be able to set up your fights well, because you could very easily end up in fights on two opposite ends of the map on this map. Um, so I think it's a, a good test of your team's abilities to coordinate, a good test of your ability to fight, a good test of your ability to know which positions are good for your weapon and play them well. Um, I think it's a, a good way to figure out which is the best team, which is what we're looking for here. Next down, we've got Not Complaining tier. Um, these definitely do have some issues, but I would also never complain if I saw them on a tournament map list. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's a reasonable map to play in Splat Zones. So we've got Hacklefish Market. Uh, this has been a perennial favorite of Splatoon 3. Um, it's very linear, which is what I don't like about it. Um, it's not the sort of map that you can run something like a brush or like, you know, a dually squelchers on and get a lot of value out of them because they just don't have anywhere to draw the enemy team away to. They don't have much they can do to distract. Um, it's just you walk forward, you get to the zone, you walk forward past that. There aren't that many like flank routes um, right up until you're like in the fullest lockout that you're going to be on that map. Um but it does force you to play the game. You're not super far away from the zone at any point in time. You know, the frontliners who are pu pushing in are probably not going to go very far past the switchback. Um, so unless you've won uh, two fights in a row, you're not going to be able to hold them all the way in their spawn. The spawn area is very wide, lets you drop out top left, lets you go all the way down on the right. Um, 
and those are very far away from each other. But again, the midsection of it is probably the weak point. That's why I don't put it up a little bit higher. Flounder Heights is a really controversial one. People either love this one or they hate this one. Um, the really cool thing about it is that back capping, that is taking the enemy side zone and working from there, is actually a very viable strategy here, um, which makes it so that it kind of pulls the, the map apart and forces you to really know what you're doing to take the right fights. Um, the downside to it that I see is that the lockout is pretty nasty, and it takes so long to get back up to the zone that the game is often really uh, momentum swingy. It makes it so that if you get control once, there's a risk that you just win the game on the spot because you have so much high ground um, and they have to work so hard to get up back to the zone again. It takes them so long to do that. Um, so while I like some parts of this and you do have a pretty wide area to at least approach mid from, um, in lockout positions, it's something that you can definitely win pretty quickly. Um, and I think it's a little bit too swingy to really be one of my favorites. Still, again, not going to complain about it being there. Inkblot Art Academy. Um, this one, the, the mid section is pretty good. And it's nice it, how resistant it is to lockout. It's very difficult to lockout. What I don't like about this is how little mobility there is to get you into the enemy side. You can only really approach the enemy side in one direction. So if you're trying to push any further than being directly at the zone, you have to make a really risky play to run up the ramp on the left-hand side. And that's pretty much all you have access to. You don't have a block to get up on the platform. You don't have a rail on the left to get up on the platform. You just have to run up that ramp. And then you're probably going to get bullied back off pretty quickly. And you're only there just to distract for a little while. And then it's just like you're fighting over the zone again. There's not much of an offensive advantage that you can take, except taking like the high ground position on top mid and trying to like shark underneath the ledge or something. Um, if you have to back up at all, you're fighting on the zone again. I'd rather there be a way to at least be able to push past the zone as the front line and kind of hold somewhere. Um, even so, it being a, a place where uh, lockouts are more difficult, it can, it's a blessing and a curse. Just, it feels like holding the zone um, is a matter of being able to fight on the zone more than it is anything else. And that's different from how it usually works. Usually it, you have to hold past the zone and they have to break your hold past the zone. And that gives you the ability on offense to be rewarded. If you move quickly off of winning a fight here, you kind of just assume one position every time and hope you can win the fight again. And I think that's kind of not as deep as any of the other map modes. Wahoo world. Uh, this is the best Wahoo world map mode by far. I will not be rating Wahoo world higher than this on any of the other lists. And that's because the bridge is available all the time to mid because that's there. You have so many more options to traverse through mid. You have better options to get to the opposing side and threaten them there. Um, it's a lot less of a stalemate in mid because this map is otherwise pretty hourglass shaped where the mid section is a choke point, which makes it very difficult to shift from neutral game to offense. Um, it makes it very easy to stall out and it makes it so that on other modes like say tower control, it's very difficult to even get a push going in the first place because going through mid is so awkward and so dangerous. Now it's not perfect as a zones map. It is still really awkward and difficult to get through mid. Um, but you have a pretty wide front that you're going to be fighting on there. Um, you have multiple routes you can use to get in, one far right, one far left, which can split the defense. Um, so I think it is a good kind of challenging map to play. Barnacle. Um, Barnacle is very swingy. Um, the biggest reason that it's not in a tier higher is just how much momentum you can develop on a single lockout. Um, if you get control of the right places and they don't get significant value out of their specials, it's very difficult to actually drop down for a retake on this map. Um, but you are pretty close to zone to do it. You have the high ground to get out on the right side, and you can also send people out on left. Um, you have a little bit of cover to work with on the way out. So there are definitely ways in on the map, 
and I'm fairly fond of it. Uh, that said, I will acknowledge the, the difficulty that um, it's pretty lockout heavy, that you win two fights and you will probably win the game. And uh, for that reason, I can't put it all the way up. Ship Shape. Um, I think Zones is one of the stronger map modes for this map. Uh, my opinion of it has, has gone down a little bit since when it came out. Um, I think it's still... It struggles because it's a little bit too narrow in some places where, like... Um, if the left side approach on retake were better on, you know, any given map mode, I think that it would be a much stronger map for it. But as it stands, you kind of have to... Right is the only really safe way to drop out, and left you're going to need overwhelming force to take back. Um, and even once you've got left, that doesn't necessarily mean you've got access to mid. So it's it's kind of a, uh, a team effort to get out on the retake there. Um, not quite the best spawn area for getting out. There are some ways that it can be locked out if uh, someone's a little bit too close to your base. Um, but that right side pit helps a lot with concealing the shorter ranged weapons and trying to get them out. Uh, and there's enough different things to look at that I think it, it makes it pretty good. I like the unique layout for this map on uh, specifically zones where you have to... Uh, push through the zone and then go left to clear the left side high ground. Um, but you can also drop right and have a unique kind of access to the backside of the opponent's formation. It uh, kind of shifts the objective line from being a straight line to being a bit of an S-curve. Um, and it makes it a little bit more strategically interesting, I think. Next, uh, I, the only one I put here was Brinewater Zones. Um, Brinewater Zones is relatively fair, it's just very, very volatile, and there are definitely some weapons that I think have a little bit of a disproportionate impact here, um, more so than you'd really want. Um, for one thing, Tri-Strikes, you can throw two strikes at the zone and it will cap off of those if you place them well. Um, and then you have a third one to throw someplace else. It's just too easy to get this zone. If this zone were bigger, this would be a much better map, um, but they don't have room for it to be bigger um because they just made the map that small so it's really awkward um the hold though um it's kind of nice because it again forces the objective line into a bit of an s curve where you can take a shortcut by dropping left or you can go all the way out on right and you can try and split the defense that way um i just i feel like sometimes when you're holding the zone you can play a pretty good offense and still lose the zone despite winning the fight that they try to take against you for it. Um, not quite enough potential for an offensive team to really capitalize on winning plays. Um, it's a little bit too easy to cheese the zone and keep the game going. So that's my biggest uh, gripe with it. Uh, it is also a really, really strong E-leader map. And uh, as we will find as we go further down... If it's a good E-leader map, that's not necessarily a good sign for the competitive healthiness of the map. Uh, these ones, I personally would rather not play, but if they were in a tournament map list, it wouldn't be, you know, a disaster. It wouldn't be really questionable. It's just, I personally am not a huge fan of them. I think that there are some, some significant flaws with their use. Um... To start with, Museum has the big zone problem where it's too difficult to get that zone flipped all the way over. Um, there's just a lot of it to paint and not a lot of cover around, so you kind of just... It's a little bit too easy for them to hold. Uh, I'm also not a fan of how difficult it is to move into the enemy side here. Uh, again, very much like on, say, Inkblot, you don't have a lot of options to actually be able to push up and take advantage of getting control of the zone. Um, it's entirely possible that you paint the zone and then in cleaning up, you don't actually have time to even get up on the enemy plat and they're able to just immediately come out from spawn and be painting the zone again without you actually being in position to stop them in any really meaningful way. Um, I think that's kind of lame because like on one hand, I talk about how we want it to be a retakeable map. On the other hand, we don't want it to be something that doesn't allow the attacking team to resist the retake very well. Um, it's it, it makes it so that winning an advantage doesn't get you enough 
um, that it doesn't really reward the best play because you can just come back and, and drop onto the zone immediately again. Um, but because it is a big zone, I think it kind of counteracts that a little bit, where, yes, you can get back to the zone, but can you actually cap it? That's a little bit more difficult. And so I, I it's a personal preference not to have to play it, but it I totally understand, you know, seeing it in map lists and stuff, and I'm, I'm down to, you know, lab it out with the team and figure it out. Mahi Mahi Resort, um, I really do not like Mahi Mahi in any of its forms. This, I think, is definitely the best one, um, because it's very difficult for the attacking team to get into strong lockout positions on the plat. They can get up there, and they can try to make something happen, but there's just not a lot of cover. And so generally, the way that it tends to have to play is you get up just in front of the zone, and that's where you're trying to, you know, shark and hold from cover. That's where you're trying to use your specials. But the enemy team who's trying to retake does manage to get specials, and they're going to be able to use those specials to put push back in. And it's going to be a test of who uses their specials the best, who's able to survive the special pushes the best. Like, it's a good test of a lot of the fundamentals of the game, um, but it feels very, like, turn-based, um, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of room for individual outplays when they're just going to brute force their way in with like a bunch of specials and it's up to you to just try and survive them. Um, and the fact that there's only the one way into the enemy spawn is pretty restrictive of the attacking team. Um, I'd think this map in general is just too small. Um, there's not enough cover, but the fact that it's on zones kind of mitigates that a little bit because it gives you a lot of chances to retake um and you do still have a number of different ways to get onto the zone even if it isn't the the widest map or anything sturgeon um sturgeon the mid area is really awkward uh it's a pretty large zone but you can't really paint all of it at once with a line of sight weapon because of the way that it curves so it's kind of hard to even keep tabs on how much of it is painted and what's going on on the other side of the zone. Uh, and that can make it feel kind of random sometimes, where you're painting one side of the zone and then you just kind of move up into mid and you get to see what's there because you don't really have a way of seeing it otherwise. Um, so I, I don't like how that's a blind spot in mid. Um, mid is also just an absolute shooting gallery for like a charger posted up on snipe. It's very difficult to actually exist in mid. What I don't like about this map is that you've got that whole court area, um, which is massively, massively low ground, uh, like lower than everything else around it, and that the enemy team can punish you for trying to push uphill to get back to the zone. Um, this is bypassed a little bit by the fact that you can drop in right pit, um, and that's one of the saving graces for the map. Um, but it's a little bit too long to get back to the zone, and a little bit too easy of a hold on defense, I think. So this is a map mode that I think is a little bit too swingy. But overall, the map is not too bad. Umami Ruins is a little bit too narrow for my liking. Um, I like the way that it segments things to keep it from just being eater food. Uh, in the way that, you know, you put up the signs and everything. But the zones are really small and really narrow definitely not one of my favorites and would rather not play it but also i you know i'm not gonna complain too much if it's in the map list i'd complain a little bit more if we were to see the next two um hammerhead and undertow are really not great in general um undertow has some better modes but zones is probably its worst by far um these zones are just too small like, way, way, way too small. It's too easy to flip them, which makes it really difficult to get any kind of momentum going at all, because all the opponents have to do is drop, like, a single try strike on one of them, and it will all but flip. Um, the fact that there's two of them is helpful. You know, it's it, it's better than Brinewater in the sense that you, you have a lot harder of a time painting both of them at once, but it's still too small. And... What also sucks is that those areas on the zone are really the only safe ways to get to the opposing side, because otherwise you're trying to go over mid, where everyone and their mother can shoot. Um, the E-leaders are going to see that from their high ground, the short-range shooters are going to see that from trying to push up, the mid-range weapons are going to hit that from spine, like, 
there's no safe way to move across the zones and there's not a lot of room to even take a fight so it ends up having to just kind of be like throw all of your specials at them and then pray that you can streak across mid and get to the relative safety of the other side before somebody sees you so not a big fan there hammerhead i think zones is honestly underrated on hammerhead um the midsection of this map if it were just that midsection i would actually say is at least not complaining possibly could play this in every tournament um i think the midsection of that map is actually really good really well designed it gives you multiple ways in there are so many little hidey holes um the zone is a decent size to where you have to put a significant uh impact to be able to cap it but it's not so big that it's just slowing the game down the problem is that once you get past the zone, there's way too hard of a lockout. It's very similar to the walleye warehouse problem of S2, where getting out of your zone should not be as difficult as it is on that map. It's better than a walleye warehouse by a little bit, but not by much. It, it, you can't lock it out with a single inkjet from, you know, downtown. But you can lock it out for, by a single inkjet if you get pretty deep in their base. Um, and, uh, it's just way too easy to keep them stuck there. So that's what really brings this down. It's the fact that the area in the first third of the way back to the zone exists, uh, way too skinny, way, way too narrow, very poorly designed. So this gap here is signifying the worst map, in my opinion, in Splatoon 2. That is a hot take because Moray Towers existed uh, but I think Moray Clams, at least, was very acceptable um, compared to most of the modes on Walleye. Um, so this is where, like, once we've crossed this territory, we're into some really, really rough ideas for map modes. And that lets us reach the uniquely Splatoon 3 tier of God Awful. Mincemeat Metalworks is one of the worst maps that has ever been designed for competitive Splatoon. Again, this is not to speak unpleasantly of its design or of how fun it is to play casually but man is it a slog to play competitively there's just no safe way to push on this map there are two ways that you can possibly move past mid one of them is over the zone which is what everybody is going to be looking at and the other one is a really predictable drop which is going to be watched by a backline weapon which has a perfect vantage point of it there's just nothing really that you can do until someone has screwed up. Um, and it feels really bad to play as a short-ranged weapon. It's way too easy to play as an E-leader. I've said before that if it's a map an E-leader likes, it's probably not a well-designed map because that means that the sight lines are too open and so pushing is going to be very difficult. The frontline weapons don't really have a lot of cover they can work with. Um, they don't really have a way to shift the game in somebody else's favor, and whoever gets control is probably going to be able to keep control, and it's going to be really painful, and all you, have, all you really have that you can rely on is farming for specials and being able to brute force them out. I've also said that if the map is liked by a tent player, that it's a pretty poor map, and that's because there are going to be major choke points where it becomes a desirable enough option to just brute force them instead of trying to bypass them, instead of trying, you know, tactics. <laughs> um, no, we're just going to put a shield down the middle and we're going to run through there and that's how we're going to get through this. Well, this map has both of those problems. E-leaders, this is one of their strongest maps that they've ever had. Tent players are one of the only ways that you can actually get across the midsection because they're one of the only weapons that's capable of playing the greats. So you're just going to be standing and, and firing your E-leader at your tent shield, waiting for someone to get special, waiting for a crab tank to pop off, waiting for a Zooka to ca catch someone who strayed a little bit too far out onto the zone. And otherwise, it's just who can paint the zone in the meantime. Uh, really, really lame. Um, doesn't even offer you that many options once you are in control. Um, you have to really act quick to be able to get on the enemy plat, and if you don't do that, then they can kind of just walk back out and take the zone again. Um, it's really not very fun to play, uh, especially as any of the, the faster, more exciting weapons. So, yeah, not a fan, not a fan. Scorch Zones has an argument for worst map mode in the entire game. It has the big zone problem, 
it has the problem where you can't push past mid at all, um, more so than any, any other map. It's just a single great bridge that is the only way to get up into the enemy side. No paintable walls. There's no flanking here. There's You go the right side or you go the left side. And then you hope that you can meet in the middle with the rest of your team. And then you hope that you wipe them quickly and decisively enough that you can get someone across the bridge and maybe set up any kind of hold. Otherwise, they're going to have high ground and they're going to be able to walk right back out onto the zone again and start painting it. And it's going to neutralize and it's going to stay neutral forever because no one can paint the whole thing. It's not fun. Um, and I would not ever want a tournament to run this. And then Eel Tail Zones. <sighs> Eel Tail was already not a great map. It had a bit of a lockout problem. And then they took out your way to back up when you drop out of spawn. Um, there used to be, you know, a, a ramp that you could take to get out. And then they just made it an unpaintable wall. And so now you're stuck. Um, I don't know why they did this. It was not a good change. And this also has the big zone problem, and it also has the problem that it takes a really long time to get from your spawn to the zone, and that it, the area in between is too easily locked out. Um, something like a crab tank or a trizuka up on the bridge shuts down the vast majority of the map as you try to approach. Um, you're just fighting uphill, it seems, the whole way, until you get to the zone, and then you have to drop down and get shot at by, like, an elite or something up above. Um... There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of poor eel tail map modes, but this is one of the worst of them. So those are my takes on those maps. Um, let me know what you guys think, because again, this is not something that I th think ob is objective. Uh, I think this is more here is what I'm thinking about them, um, and uh, I I'd rather stimulate a discussion than dictate the conversation. Um, but I think it is something that now that we've got all of these maps available and we've had some time to play them, um, that I think it's a good time to have the conversation so that the map lists that we create for tournaments end up being something that the majority of people are going to like.